I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of the stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. Hello and welcome to our program called Seven. And in this program, we give you the rites of the seven sacraments of the Coptic Orthodox Church. I hope you have been following us so far. To date we have covered the first sacrament of baptism. Today we will talk to you about the second sacrament which is the sacrament of confirmation or chrismation. This sacrament is also known as the holy ointment or the holy mayroon and is the holy sacrament with which we receive the seal of the Holy Spirit. The word mayroon is a Greek word which means ointment or fragrant perfume. Let's see how important this sacrament is in our church. The biological order, a creature must first be born and then it must grow. Likewise, in the spiritual order of grace, we are born again in baptism and then we must grow in the spiritual life and bear the fruits of the Spirit. We also need to acquire the spiritual power that will enable us to overcome Satan and his army, as St. Paul said to the Ephesians. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. The Holy Sacrament of Confirmation induces us into God's spiritual army. Our body becomes a temple of the Holy Spirit who helps us to grow in the spiritual life. Confirmation is a kind of Pentecost to the baptized person. The roots of the sacraments are clear in both the Old and the New Testaments. In his sermon on Pentecost, St. Peter quotes the famous words of Joel the prophet, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Other Old Testament prophets who speak of the same promise of the Spirit also uh, include Ezekiel. Moreover, our Lord Jesus Christ instituted this Holy Sacrament through His various promises for granting the Holy Spirit. Christ said, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. And again he said, But the Holy Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Confirmation is not only a God-sent sacrament, but also is based on the practice of the apostles whereby they would place their hands on those who had be uh, believed and had been baptized so that by the laying on of the apostles' hands these would receive the Holy Spirit. The two scriptural passages that support this practice are as follows. Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them. There is no doubt then that the, the sacrament of confirmation is God sent and is an apostolic practice. Laying of the hands for the dwelling of the Holy Spirit is a specific rite of the apostles and their successors, the bishops. In Acts 8, Philip, the deacon and evangelist, preached and baptized the people of Samaria but did not grant them the gift of the Holy Spirit. The apostles came and later confirmed these new believers with the gift of the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands. As the number of believers increased, it was not possible 
for all the apostles to wander all the countries and cities to lay hands on the baptized. So they established chrismation, chrismatis, or meaning anointing, in addition to the laying on of hands, as we can see in the following New Testament examples. For you have an anointing from the Holy One. The anointing which you have received from Him abides in you. The same anointing teaches you concerning all things. He who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Confirmation is done immediately after baptism. In the past, in its attempt to closely follow the practice of the apostles, the church practiced confirmation performed by the bishop. Because this was not always possible, the church established the custom of preparing the holy chrism to be used by the priests. Let us look at the history of the holy oil Mayrun. Our fathers, the apostles, took the spices that were on our Lord's body in the tomb and the spices that the woman had prepared, melted all in pure olive oil and prayed on it. They decreed that this holy oil be used as means of anointing the baptized in order to confirm and give them the gift of the Holy Spirit. They also decided that their successes, the bishops, renew the holy oil by adding to the original so that the churches never run out. When St. Mark came to Alexandria, he brought with him some of that holy oil. In the beginning of the 4th century, His Holiness Pope Athanasius the Apostolic, the 20th Pope of Alexandria, decided to renew the holy oil. So he gathered all the spices and perfumes that God had ordered Moses the prophet to use in making the holy ointment and added them to the remainder of the holy oil as St. Mark had brought with him to Egypt. St. Athanasius sent some of the holy oil to the bishops of Rome, Antioch and Constantinople with the recipe that he used in manufacturing it and they all received it with rejoicing. The Maroon oil consists of 30 kinds of spices and perfumes which have been added to pure olive oil and smithed four times. The filtered oil is then poured into a large container and after the liturgy of the sanctification of the Maroon, the patriarch places the old leaven in the Maroon recently made while saying certain prayers. Our late Pope Corollus VI, the 116th Pope, made the Holy Mayroon uh, only once. And our beloved Pope Shinoda III, the 117th Pope, has made it six times so far to meet the need of the Coptic churches worldwide. Through the prayers of the Coptic popes made the Holy Mayroon as the church grew uh, across the world and there was need for more Mayroon. It has been made in our church 30 times until now. Concerning the chrismation, 
and our salvation. His Holiness Pope Shenouda III said, We can never be saved without this gift of the Holy Spirit because our whole spiritual life is the response of our will to the work of the Holy Spirit within us. Unless we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, all our life will be fertile and subject to petition. It is a gift that we receive through the sacrament of the Holy Unction and for which we pray continually saying, Do not take your Holy Spirit from me, otherwise we shall perish. So let's now look at the rite of the anointing with the Holy Chrism. After the baptism, the mother of the child dries him and then the priest starts to anoint the child by the Mayroon in six groups with total of 36 places in the child's body. The first group is eight anointments on his head in the form of a cross as follows. The forehead, the nostrils, the mouth, the right ear, the right eye, the left eye, the left ear. The priest anoints while saying, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the ointment of grace of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the second group, there are four ointments. He anoints the heart, the navel, the back, and the lower back while saying, an ointment of the pledge of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. In the third group, there are six ointments on the right hand, the right shoulder joint, the right underarm, the elbow, the right inner elbow, the right palm, the right back of the wrist. And the priest says, an ointment for the community of eternal life. Amen. In the fourth group, the priest makes six ointments to the left arm, as he did in the right one, while saying, A holy ointment for Christ our God and an imperishable seal. Amen. In the fifth group, there are six ointments to the uh, right leg as follows, the right hip joint, the inside of the right hip, the right knee, the inside or back of the right knee, the right ankle joint and above the right ankle. The priest says, perfection of the grace of the Holy Spirit and the shield of faith and truth. Amen. In the sixth group, the priest makes six ointments to the left leg as he did in the right one while saying I anoint you mentioning his or her name with holy oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen in the rite of chrismation the body is anointed with holy oil 36 times as a symbol of the sanctification of the soul and body together so that man in his wholeness becomes a temple of the Holy Spirit. All members of the body, even those which are inferior, are anointed with the Holy Chrism, for there is no defiled or shameful member of the body. There is also a spiritual meaning behind these anointments. Let us see. Anointing the face all around is to sanctify the senses of the person, the forehead to sanctify the mind and thoughts, the nose to sanctify the smell, the ears to sanctify hearing, and the eyes to sanctify the vision. We can see the importance of anointing all these parts, so the church has to make sure that all the senses of the child is being sanctified to God, and the child will be able to keep his senses pure by the grace of the Holy Spirit that dwells in him. Anointing the heart and the back is also important, as the psalmist David prayed, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. Anointing the hands is important as they are instruments of work and contain the sense of touch. 
We should keep our hands pure from all things that uh, may defile them, from touching things that are impure, from partaking in ungodly deeds, from taking part in murder, stealing, and so, so forth. Anointing the areas of the hip joints, these are sensitive parts of the body. For near the inner hips lies the reproductive organs, and the church anoints this area so that the child may lead a life of purity. Anointing the feet is to protect them from walking in the way of sin and from going to a corrupt places. Avoiding the way of sin will enable us to live a virtuous life and finally gain eternal life. The child is anointed by Mayrun only once in his or her lifetime. After completing the anointment of the child, the priest lays his hands on him while saying, Be blessed by the heavenly and angelic blessings. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you in his name. And he continues, Now accept the Holy Spirit. Here he will, you'll notice the bishop or priest breathes over the face of the baptized person. Now Abuna blesses the white clothes saying, Clothes of eternal life that is without corruption. Amen. And he helps the mother put on the uh, child's clothes. Then he puts on the baptized a red ribbon and crown. Right after putting on the white garment, the priest encircles the baptized infant with a red ribbon. Usually it takes the shape of a cross from the back. It reminds us with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus by whom we were saved. And as the blood of the Passover lamb was marking the houses of the Israelites to save them, so also the blood of Jesus is the mean and sign of our deliverance. Then the commandment for the parents is read. It is the most important part for the parents of the child. The church here urges them to remember the excellence of the mystery that the child had received and also keep reminding them of their duties concerning uh, this new member of Christ's body and how to raise them in a godly manner. Now let's uh, have time to answer a few questions. Some churches don't administer the chrismation immediately following baptism. Why is this so? Concerning the chrismation of infants, the Orthodox churches administer chrismation immediately following the baptism in accordance with the teachings of the Holy Bible and the Apostolic tradition. But the Roman Catholic Church has started since the 13th century to delay the confirmation of infants until they are 7 or 12 years old and consequently delays their participation in the Holy Eucharist. This delay is totally unjustified. Wasn't St. John the Baptist filled with the Holy Spirit while still in his mother's womb? For he will be great in the sight of the Lord and he will also be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. Did our fathers, the apostles, get confirmed or anointed? On the Pentecost, the apostles were anointed for the divine mission to continue the preaching, healing, and sanctifying the ministry of Christ in the world. On the Pentecost day, the Holy Spirit dwelled in the apostles, filling them with the power and the wisdom of God, enabling them to preach Christianity in different locations to different people with different languages. So what happened to Jesus Christ at the Epiphany and to the Apostles and Pentecost takes place in the life of each member of the body of Christ as believers. Immediately following baptism, through the sacrament of chrismation, baptism and chrismation are not separated in our Coptic Orthodox Church because one is baptism with water and the other is baptism by spirit. Jesus said, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Thus, this ends today's episode on the Sacrament of Confirmation. Thank you, and see you in our next episode, which will be covering the Sacrament of Confession at the same time. God bless you.